Hello Year 11, it's Mrs. Durrett here. I'm going to talk to you about effective revision strategies. Um, and I'm going to start by just telling you two key things. And I'm going to prove to you that these two things are important. And if you can overcome these two things, your revision should become much more effective. Number one, did you know we can't focus on too many things at once? It simply overloads our brains and we essentially can't take any more information in. And number two, we forget information quickly unless we review it regularly. Information, certainly something, words that we, we read or hear is very transient. And so it goes in one ear and is simply gone very quickly thereafter. So here's what I want you to do. In a second, I'm going to ask you to try and remember these letters. And perhaps in a second, I'll ask you to write it down. Just stare at them right now. Don't write anything down. Okay, go on then. Scribble down what you can remember. Right, let's see how you got on. Did you remember them? I reckon you possibly remembered the first few letters and maybe the last few letters. But there is a very, very slim chance that you got that copied down exactly as that was. Okay, purely from memory. Should we try again though? Let's try this one. Now, no cheating. Don't write it down first. Just look. OK, here it goes. Write it down. What can you remember? See, I bet you found that one much easier. Did you get BBC, FBI, ATM, TLC and CIA? Do you know why you found that one much easier to remember? Because it was familiar. You've come across these so many times before. These are familiar little chunked letters, aren't they? They're not unusual to us. We've retrieved them, we've recalled them. They're part of our long term memory. So they become very familiar, especially chunked together like that. So let's think about our revision. If we were to chunk our revision together in memorable chunks and revisit them so often that it becomes part of our long term memory, it would be much easier to, re to remember these in an exam. This is why cramming the night before a, an exam never works because you're simply overloading your brain. Little and often and all your information that you learn at school will become very familiar, just like these um, group letters are here. I need to watch this. This is a test of selective attention. Count how many times the players wearing white pass the basketball. How many passes, How many did, passes you did you count? The correct, the correct answer, answer is 15, is 15 passes. passes. But did you, but see, did the you see the gorilla? This video this is video from is research from by research Daniel, Daniel Simons, Simons and Christopher, and Christopher Chabri, Chabri and is copyrighted. And is copyrighted. It is, it is available for use in for talks, use in training, talks and training and teaching. And teaching. So what's really interesting about that is I bet you a load of you didn't see the gorilla first time round. I'm going to be honest, I didn't. I got the 15, was very proud of myself, had no idea there was a gorilla there, didn't see it at all. I was so focused on that ball being passed from the people with the white t-shirts on that I couldn't focus on anything else. Now imagine that for your revision. If you were so focused on one thing, 
how much you take that in. But actually, think of all the things you're missing if there's other things going on. So think about the impact of having music on whilst you're revising, of having your phone on, your desk while you're trying to revise. Think of how many times that will just take your attention away. So if I said to you, wait for the gorilla and have a look at that, but also count how many balls get past when the people with the white t-shirt on, suddenly you're dividing your attention between the two. There's a good chance you might not see the gorilla and you, or you would lose count. Okay, there's a good chance you won't be able to do both as well at the same time. So if you're listening to music whilst you're trying to read and learn a piece of information and commit it to your long-term memory, think about how often you're just tapping away to the music or you sing the odd words and that's actually taking your attention away. So I urge you not to listen to any music, to actually put your phone away, lock it in a drawer. Otherwise, every time it sort of flashes up or you see you've got a text coming through or WhatsApp, you'll just divide your attention between the two. You're thus making you less successful. And what about memory? Let's have a look at this. Did you know when you learn a piece of information within 20 minutes, you will actually only be able to recall 58% of what you've actually learned. Within an hour, you'll actually only be able to recall 44%. After nine hours, 36%. After a day, you'll only be able to recall 33% of that information. After two days, 28. After six days, only 25. 31 days, 21% is all you'll remember. And thereafter, it goes down to zero. But imagine after two days, you retrieve that information again. That would pop it right back up to the 100%. And then after four days, you came back and retrieved that information again. And then after a month, you retrieved it. Eventually, it would just stick in your long term memory and it would become a piece of information that you've just memorised and know and that you could recall at any stage. And surely that's what you want to be able to do in the exam. Like this. The first review, you remember about 50% of it, but actually you review it again, that goes up. You review it again a third time, it goes up. Keep reviewing it. And it soon becomes part of your long term memory and you're able to retain and ret retain and recall it 100 percent of the time. Now, did you know a very famous study was carried out a number of years ago and it was proved that you have to come across concepts and recall them at least three times before it will ever stick in that long term memory, before you'll ever really have actually learned that information. So when you go to a lesson and you say, oh, I just can't remember this. That's because you haven't tried to recall it and review it. Try and do it at least three times, spread out, and you'll find it'll just stick. So when I hear people saying, oh, I can't do that maths question, can't do that maths piece of work, that's because you haven't tried to recall it time and time and time again. Because when you do, it just sticks. Remember, we want to make our learning sticky. We want to be able to put it in our long term memory so therefore we can recall any information and there's no limit to your long term memory. The problem is our short term working memory can get overloaded and there is a limit to that. So that's why, again, cramming the night before the exam doesn't work because your, your brain can only hold about three or four pieces of information at a time. But if we spread that learning out, that revision out over a day and then recall it again a week later and recall it again a couple of days after that and then recall it again a month after that, you will find it just sticks. So my key points were this. We can't focus on too many things at once. And we forget information quickly unless we are forced to recall it regularly. And actually, at least it has to be recalled at least three times before we're going to be able to recall it more effectively. So hopefully by now your tutor has given you an, a, a vision guide. This is a number of strategies that are effective for helping you build up the habit of revision and stop you doing strategies that just simply don't work. Reading over information from a textbook or your notes 
And they go, oh, yeah, that's right. I remember this. Well, that gives you a false sense of your ability to remember and recall information. Because if we reread something, yeah, we will recall it at the time. But try and recall it without rereading it. That's when you've got to really think about it. And that's when you start to learn it. So rereading information, highlighting, doesn't really work if I'm honest. So this revision guide is going to give you lots of different ideas to help you. For example, there's lots of different tips on retrieval practice and it tells you why it works. So for example, doing lots of quizzes. As you know, in, in class time, we do do now starters. That's all to force you to retrieve information just from memory. And it's okay to get it wrong because then you have to look up the right answer and go, oh, that's right, that's what it was. And weirdly, you actually are more likely to remember that bit that you got wrong now thereafter than had you got it right straight away the first time, possibly through a guess. So self-quizzing, quizzing each other at break times, lunch times, revision slots after school, spend time quizzing each other on your information. It will help both of you. What about spacing out your practice? Start to make a revision timetable where you spend an hour on a science topic in the morning and then a day later or two days later, you're going to come back to that science topic. And then a week later, you'll come back to it again. Don't just say one day I'm going to sit for three hours and learn the science topic and that's it. Good luck in the exam because that's not going to work. But if I did little sessions often and regularly and spaced out, then I'll actually, over time, it will stick in my long term memory. What about working through lots of examples um, and, and exam practice questions and elaborating? In this book, there'll be lots of information on how to elaborate and really develop your explanations. Interleaving is very interestingly, uh, interesting and effective strategy. This means don't just sit doing five mark questions over and over and over again. Mix it up a bit because actually by the time you're on the third five marker, your brain stops working as well because your brain's already switched on to how you do it. So you stop thinking as much. So if you did a five mark and then a 10 mark and then switched to a different topic and did a 20 mark and then switched to maybe a different subject and did a, a 12 marker and then switched back to your five marker, your brain's constantly having to chop and change, which is very difficult. But weirdly, it forces your, your brain to constantly be thinking. And when you're constantly having to think and constantly having to go, oh, that's right. What do I do for this type? Oh, what do I do for this type of question? Then that makes you learn it more quickly and it makes it stick. Dual coding. Have you ever heard the phrase, a picture paints a thousand words? Well, it's really effective. If you can look at a piece of information and then try and think of a, an image that would go with it and help you remember it, then that is really, really effective for your memory when it comes to recalling information at a time of need, which will be in an exam. You might not be a good um, artist, much like me, but a little picture can really, really help. And it doesn't matter if anyone else can't understand the picture, as long as you can. This little revision guide will also talk you through exam vocabulary because there are certain words that feature in most exams. Evaluate, analysis, analyse. What do they actually mean? So make sure you know them. And also in the revision guides, there's lots of strategies on your well-being and, and how to look at effective revision tools. For example, we've all got mobile phones, so utilise it. Obviously, I said put your phone away when you're revising certain information. But there are times when you can use your mobile phone. As I've mentioned before, the Anki app or Quizlet are both very, very good free apps that you can download and put on all your keywords and you can mix between different subjects and topics. And that then therefore is you spacing out and interleaving your information and allowing you to recall that information. This is just one of many revision um, and exam stress um, techniques or videos I'm going to record for you. Um, so look out for the rest. Happy revising.